Welcome to our quick rundown of the classic flick, House of Dracula. The movie is a mix of funny, shocking, and sad moments, so stick around to catch them all. In the movie, you'll see Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the wolf man. As you watch, you might wonder which character you like the most. Each one brings something different to the screen. You might find yourself drawn to a particular scene or moment that sticks with you after the movie ends. Maybe it's a scary encounter with Dracula or a touching moment between the characters. Whatever it is, share it with others. What's your most special memory or personal experience related to this film? Let us know in the comments below. We're eager to hear from you. Keep watching for more interesting facts and insights about the movie, and don't forget to share your thoughts. Happy watching! A classic horror fan's review of House of Dracula might not be as enthusiastic as one hopes. While Universal attempts to capitalize on its iconic monsters by bringing together Dracula, Frankenstein, and the Wolfman, the execution falls short. The narrative feels hastily put together, lacking in originality and depth. Despite a capable cast, including John Carradine as Dracula and Lon Chaney Jr. as Lawrence Talbot Wolfman, the script fails to offer much substance. Dr. Edelman's character, played by a competent actor, becomes entangled in trying to fix the various monsters rather than focusing on a cohesive storyline. Glenn Strange takes on the role of the Frankenstein monster, but the film's climax, featuring the monster engulfed in flames, feels predictable and lacks impact. Overall, House of Dracula seems like a missed opportunity for Universal during its classic horror era, failing to live up to the standards set by its predecessors. Despite the efforts of the cast, the film struggles to leave a lasting impression, ultimately ending on a disappointing note. In House of Dracula, the actor portraying Frankenstein's monster was not the large figure many assumed him to be. Despite his slim frame and medium height, he used lifts and padding to create the illusion of size. Universal Studios suggested a name change for him, feeling his original name lacked romance. While he agreed to shorten his last name to Stevens, he insisted on keeping his first name. Prioritizing stage over screen, his most notable film role was as Franz Edelman, a surgeon entangled with Dracula, the Wolfman, and Frankenstein's creature, ultimately becoming a vampire himself. Boris Karloff owes his fame to actor Bela Lugosi, who declined the role of Frankenstein in 1931. Lugosi's refusal paved the way for Karloff to take on the iconic role, launching his career from being an extra to a prominent figure in the film industry. Contrary to a persistent myth, Karloff did not work in manual labor positions between acting roles upon arriving in Hollywood. Historian Greg Nesteroff revealed that Karloff lived luxuriously at Hornby mansions, working as a realtor and evicting widowed ladies unable to pay their mortgages. This contradicts the image of Karloff engaging in manual labor, a fabrication created by the actor himself for studio publicity. Another debunked rumor is the story of Karloff's involvement in organizing benefit performances for a struggling acting troupe in 1912. According to the authorized Karloff biography by Stephen Jacobs, the troupe was not on the verge of breaking up due to financial issues, and Karloff did not organize benefit performances or donate proceeds to recovery efforts after an F4 tornado hit Regina, Saskatchewan. In summary, Boris Karloff's rise to fame, his financial status in Hollywood, and his alleged charitable efforts in Canada are clarified by historical evidence, dispelling persistent myths surrounding his early career. In the movie House of Dracula, Boris Karloff's autograph is more affordable than Bela Lugosi's, which can be very expensive, sometimes reaching over $1,000 even up to $1,400. E Dollar Karloff lived in England from the mid-1950s until he died. During his career, he acted alongside Lon Chaney Jr. in 11 films, including House of Dracula. They worked together in different kinds of movies, showing they could play many different roles. Karloff's role in the movie makes it even more interesting for fans of scary movies. Despite being old, people still love watching the movie because it's a classic in horror. Lon Chaney Jr. acting with Karloff also makes the movie important in movie history. House of Dracula still captures people's attention because it tells a scary story that never gets old. In the 1945 movie House of Dracula, the cast has some interesting connections. The actor who plays a crucial role in the film has worked with Christopher Lee in other movies. They've both played famous characters like Frankenstein's monster and Dr. Fu Manchu in different films. Also in House of Dracula, the actor appears alongside Bela Lugosi in several other movies, such as The Wolfman and Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. 
These collaborations show how actors in classic horror films often work together on different projects. In his personal life, the actor had two sons. One of them served as a flying officer during World War II and tragically died in action in 1941. His second son was born later in his life and only outlived him by six months. The movie is well regarded for its impact on the horror genre and it's remembered alongside other classic horror films. House of Dracula remains a significant piece of cinema showcasing the talent and versatility of its cast members. House of Dracula, released in 1945, marked Edward T. Lowe's final screenplay. There are reports that Lowe, disillusioned with Hollywood, deliberately crafted a nonsensical plot. The film lacks explanations for the return of characters like Larry Talbot and Dracula from their previous demises in House of Frankenstein. After completing the script, Lowe reportedly burned all his film memorabilia. The lead actor faced discouragement from his father regarding his career choice. Despite battling lung cancer, he paid a touching tribute to his friend Lon Chaney Jr. upon his passing. Six months later, he also succumbed to his illness. In the 1945 film, Lon Chaney Jr., who played Lawrence Talbot, surprised audiences by adding a mustache to his werewolf character's appearance, a unique choice for him. On set, he often had his dogs with him, and there's a famous photo of him playing with his German shepherd while dressed as the wolf man. Interestingly, earlier in his career, Cheney turned down the chance to play Dracula and Frankenstein's monster, feeling those roles weren't right for him. However, he later took on the role of Dracula in House of Frankenstein and reprised it in House of Dracula. In the movie, Cheney's portrayal of Talbot with a mustache and his impact on the horror genre stand out, given his unconventional decisions in his career. In the movie House of Dracula from 1945, Lionel Atwill, a talented actor, had a memorable role. He really liked the books of Joseph Conrad, a famous writer. Atwill once played a big character, Kurtz, in a version of Conrad's Heart of Darkness on a TV show called Playhouse 90 in 1956. It's interesting to note that Atwill was fighting lung cancer bravely while making this movie. After finishing the movie on October 25, 1945, Atwill's health got worse. Sadly, he died on April 22, 1946, because of his illness. Lionel Atwill is remembered for his acting in movies and the roles he played. Looking at Atwill's life, we see he faced tough times but kept going. He loved acting and telling stories. The House of Dracula shows how good he was at acting and people still remember his role in it. Thinking about Lionel Atwill, we can see he left a lasting impression on the movie world. His acting is still appreciated today. This story helps us see how strong and talented he was. House of Dracula, released in 1945, was part of the Son of Shock package of 20 titles that aired on television in 1958. It followed the original Shock Theater release of 52 features one year earlier. In the film House of Dracula, Karloff, a member of the Arizona Wranglers Cowboy Singing Group, delivered his last words to his wife as he was dying of pneumonia, saying Walter Pigeon, 